Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so in this video, I want to go over some changes to a video I made a little while back, well, four years ago. Uh, so in this video, we looked at how to secure API keys in a browser extension specifically focused on a Chrome extension. So in this example here, we were going through using a Lambda function as an example of how you can like look for your specific extension ID in this request and then come back in the response with like your actual API key so that it's still making the call from your extension, but then making the call to your Lambda function with your API keys there. Now, rather than just mentioning in the, the comments here, I wanted to make a new video just to go into a bit of detail about some of the best approaches to, to do this and perhaps avoiding it in the first place. So if I just go through here, uh, you can see here around we're actually sending back the keys. Now, this is a very bad example to use because essentially all of this is viewable within the extension. So I'm going to show a couple of examples here with this extension here. So I have an extension that essentially calls OpenAI from, from the browser. So if I was to click this button here, so if I just go back, it's an extension that just uses the inbox SDK to grab information from an email here, and then it pulls it in, makes an API call. So with this example I showed before, what we'd actually be doing is using a service worker to directly call OpenAI um, and have the API key itself sent back so we could use it. But the best approach here is actually to have a complete separate server that you can basically proxy these with. So you could in that server check for the extension ID, ideally check for the user ID. So if the user logs into your extension, you could pass that in as well. But if we just look through the approach of what this one will be like, you can see the difference here. So if we go to our extensions, this is our extension here. You can see we're making a call to uh, my API. Now this doesn't have any API keys here at all, and it's just coming straight back with the response. So rather than, I mean, this is quite badly named here, but imagine this was actually calling OpenAI directly from your extension, which you know, especially with the rise of people building extensions potentially for the first time, they're going by the code that's been you know generated for them in some cases, and that includes putting the API key in the source. You definitely don't want to do that, and you definitely don't want to follow this approach either, where you're calling, say, a Lambda function that's validating it so that it's your extension and then returning with your API keys. You essentially never want to have your API keys touch your extension source code at all, especially if it's something like this. If it's something like analytics platform, potentially, you know, you can get away with that. But when it's something like this, you don't want those to touch your extension source code at all, or even be anywhere in the network request. So you can see us in here. If you've never looked at this part before, if you're building an extension, you know, for the first time, you always want to make sure that you're checking the network tab from your service worker. So you can get into there from the extensions menu, click on service worker just here. It's already open here. And then you just click onto network. And first of all, it'll be selected to all. And you just want to change it to fetch. And that will show you all of the, the calls your extension is making. And you can do this on any extension, actually. Once you enable developer mode, you can look at all of the extensions that you're using and see those requests. That's why it's so important to make sure that you don't put these keys into your extension. So that's why I wanted to make a new video here because I think that the last one I made was just a little bit vague. Um, so that might work really well, this approach for like config options within your extension. But yeah, the, the API key example I made here was, that was definitely a bad one. So if you are building an extension now, make sure that you have your own separate server. So that could just be something really, really, slick. like in this example here, where I just have the Next.js app that has one route that handles the actual calls to the external services like OpenAI or any other API that you might need. That has its API key, but that's all done on the back end. And that then comes back with the response. So if I click this again now, you can see my um, extension is making this call. There's no API key in here, and it's coming back with the response. But again, you can use the approach to actually pull in the uh, extension origin here, but that can be spoofed. So you can't rely on that 100% either. People could be um, getting around that. So the most secure way you could do it is by having something like a a Firebase anonymous user within your extension. So you can send a, a job with your request. You can then verify that that's come from your app. So you know that it's actually going to be you know correct. 
In my example here, I'm using the email of the user that I'm actually pulling in here. And then from that, I can determine, I have like a database associated to it so I can know how many calls that user is making. And this is coming from the actual inbox SDK. And again, that could be spoofed as well if they found you know, the specific endpoint just here and then started pushing it with requests. This was local, so it's not a great example, but imagine that was hosted and you could then, you know, make requests to that, that endpoint. Once you've got that like core set up, up and running, you can go into something like Cloudflare or even the cell has options themselves for actually adding firewalls and things around this, um, you know, rate limits to avoid things like that. Um, but yeah, that's the best way to approach this essentially never let the API keys touch your extension for one. But if you do need to make those calls, go through some type of proxy, um, you know, like a simple Next.js app like this or other services, a Lambda function could work for that as well. Um, that then offloads the handling. Uh, you just want to make sure that, you know, you check that it's coming from your extension and then depending on the type of request. So if it's something that is an expensive call, you then might want to actually have the users be authorized. But that, again, that could be an anonymous user, so they don't have to physically go in and sign up, but you know that they have an account that's tied to them within your extension. Hopefully that um, clarifies this a little bit more. If you have any questions on the approach that you're using, please do leave a comment. Um, so I want to make sure this is really, really clear, especially if you're um, building an extension potentially for the first time. So feel free to message me, but uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.